Yeah, that's great. So for the gallery, that's one of the main building blocks of the apps. We still have a lot of things that we can see. Uh, for example, we can have the selected item of the gallery. So if we click in any of those, we are selecting that item. So, and then we can use this information to do other things in the app. Let's imagine we want, for example, to select this computer and then uh, request something re uh, regarding this computer. So we have the selected information for the gallery. Let's see how to get the item I just clicked. We are not going to use right now because you have other things to cover, but soon we are going to revisit this. But let's see how this, how to know which item is selected. So uh, going to the edit mode, I was in the play mode, just exited. I'm going to add a label here to show uh, which item I just clicked. So, oops, I'm going to insert label. Now I want to insert out of the gallery. So just in the, here in the app, it shows this text by default in the text parameter. And then I want to show which item I selected in, in the gallery. Uh, if I click in the gallery, I see that the name is gallery one. Uh, what do you think about this name, Leo? Uh, we can see here in the tree view, all the elements we insert, all of them have label six, label five, image one, button yeah. one. What do you think? I think that at some point you are going to get lost because uh, there are going to be so many uh, objects there. And so a good practice is to, to get uh, good names for your objects. And actually there are uh, naming conventions for using on the objects. I like to follow uh, the naming convention that is proposed by Microsoft. Okay, really good. I also like, uh, I don't like looking at the app and seeing this. It's very confusing, mm -hmm. very difficult to find things. So for example, if I want to see the status label, if I want to find here, it's impossible. I need to go here and click Sometimes there are other things in the top of this label, so I cannot easily select. So it's a good practice to always rename things right after you create it. So in this case, let's do this exercise before we continue so we don't get lost later. For the screen, for example, let me rename to uh, assets list, since this is the page that shows already the items. So let's call asset lists. For example, the gallery, let's change to go. That's the convention Leo was mentioning. Uh, they have some prefix for each items we are going to create. So in this case, we call it go because it's a gallery. Then if we look in the tree, we already know that uh, it's a gallery by the name. Of course, we have the icons, but we also see by the name, it helps a lot. So go assets list. Uh, let's go renaming things after once when we click on them and we see that it doesn't have a correct name, let's rename. Let's not do all right now, but that's the idea. So mm -hmm. since I just created this label and it's label six, let's change to LBL that comes from label and selected item. And now let's change here the, the text and show the information, the name of the item I just clicked in the gallery. So instead of text, let's say we want to show the goal assets list. See how easy it is right now because it was gallery one before. Imagine we had 10 galleries. We wouldn't know the name for the correct one. We would go there, click, see the name and lose time and more time as we progress building the app. Now we know that it's go assets list. It's way easier. So we can get a dot selected and then dots. Then we have all the fields that come from the SharePoint list to show here in this label. In this case is the title. So here it shows PC001. Let's hit play. If I click on PC002, 
the gallery dot selected is this item now so gallery dot selected dot title that's this text if i click here on the smartphone then it will this item will be the selected and then we are going to show the gallery dot selected dot title that's the smartphone x text is there anything leo you want to you like to do when clicking in a gallery so for example now uh, i click and i cannot visually know which item is selected if if i don't look at this label but i wanted to have some animation when i hover the mouse or when i select have a different color is that possible to identify if an item is selected and change some color just to to show the user which one is yes uh, actually th this is very important uh, because we need to get some visual indicator showing the user uh, which item on the gallery is selected. Uh, a gallery will always have uh, a, an item uh, selected. So it's important in many cases to show the user which of the items are selected. Because later on, uh, the user will probably interact with the data. And it's important to, to, to show what is the data that is being uh, used at, at the moment. So yeah, we respond to your question. <laughs> we, we have that possibility. OK, how do we do that? How, how, how can I do that? All right, uh, so if you go for uh, a property called view on the gallery, template view, actually. So remember that we have one part of the gallery called template. Right, and the template uh, is not the whole object. It's this, just uh, the these little sections that we have that shows uh, each of the records. So if you select template view, we can template see view. the formula. Yeah, we can see that there is this RGBA uh, color that this is uh, it stands for the transparent color, but. Mm -hmm. uh, can you change for something like uh, gray or whatever color just to see the, the result? I can type right. gray because so, there are predefined colors. So since I type gray, e, it's got, yeah. E, yeah, so when you do that, we can see that uh, only the, the templates are gray now. But mm -hmm. uh, if you look for the whole selection of the gallery, we don't see any color, right? So. Now, what we want to do is to create uh, a if statement, so a, a condition to check if the item is selected. And if the item is selected, let's give uh, a different color for it. OK, so uh, as Leo just mentioned, we, know, we can know if the item is selected inside the formula. So the if statement is a formula inside Power Apps the first formula we are using uh, we are actually starting with a, maybe a difficult one if whoever is watching mm -hmm. doesn't know programming but it's not it's not difficult let let's go ahead we can do that so it's just use, like it's just like excel yes uh, it's like talking with the app in my opinion uh, when i teach mm -hmm. in portuguese it's more difficult but since now we are talking in english and these expressions are in english when we mm -hmm. want to the app to do something, we just need to talk with the app. So in case uh, we are going to say to the app, if the item is selected, just show a light blue color in the end. If not, show a white color. So we just mm -hmm. need to translate this to the app code. And it happens that the codes really like the same of, a, of a, or us talking to the app. So we use the if. We use the equals, so mm -hmm. we, yeah, let's do. So for example, if the item is selected, so how do we know if the item is selected is this item dot is selected. So if the item is selected, this will return a true or a false. Then I just add a comma and what view I return to the template few parameters if the item is selected, I will return, for example, a light, light blue. That's one color that Power App has already uh, predefined. 
So if true, it will return light blue. If not, if it's false after the comma, it will return, for example, white or transparent. Uh, there is also an option to return a transparent. So I just talk to the app. If the item is selected, return light blue. If not, if it's not selected, return white. So let's play. And we see that already the PC002 that's selected because we see here too in the bottom, it's light blue in the end, the others are not. If we click on the smartphone, this item will be selected and this one will have the is selected property set to true and the color will be light blue while the PC002 will lose this property because it won't be selected anymore and it will be white. So mm -hmm. let's click. Just select it. So now this one has the light blue. So way easier now for the user to identify which item is selected. And we don't even need this label. We just need if, if you want to access this data, this information to do something else. Good. Nice. Nice. <laughs> That's a that's a big explan explanation, but the very end is simple. Yeah, it's very yeah, very it's very, it's a very important one. Yes, very important one. Okay, there is also other configurations for the gallery that I can, for example, when I hover the mouse over the gallery, it can do so, an animation to just to make that more with more interaction. Let's see how it works. So if I click in the gallery, I have here the transition. So I can select pop or push. And then when I hold, for example, now I'm selecting push. When I hover the mouse, it will do this pushing uh, animation mm -hmm. here. It's, it starts to look uh, nice. And then I click and select. Good. Yeah. And I think this also a good hint for the user uh, to understand that uh, this is interactive, right? So everything that we do here has a purpose. And uh, I think when we do things like this, it's to uh, get a message for, for the user. So, you know, you, you can click here or interact with, with this. Yes, that's true. Because if it didn't have this animation, it's it can be something very static. Maybe the user mm -hmm. don't need to click, but now it's it's clear that it, it's clickable. Yeah. So it also works for other elements. For example, the button here, you see that it changes the color a little bit. We can also mm -hmm. do this for the label uh, for several elements here. Uh, in this in the in the gallery, uh, we have we don't have much options regarding color when we, we hover things. But we can also add inside the gallery an element that will change the color when we hover. But for the button, for example, if we click in the button, we have several properties here. So for example, the color when we press, the color when we click, the no, no, sorry, press and click is the same. The the, the <laughs> color when we hover. So the border color, the text color, we can change. So it's mm -hmm. it has this uh, several configurations for several parameters, several uh, items here. So to show the user that's, that they can interact with the app. Yeah, I think this is happening with the icon that you have there on the end of the, the gallery. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can yeah, see that because it, I, I think it's true. It's, it, yeah, it's, it changes slightly, but let yeah. we can we can change. So for example, if I select the icon that's inside the gallery, we have the hover color here. So mm -hmm. right now it 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 changes to the same color, it just fades a little bit, but we could change, for example, to let me just comment. So that's one thing. If you add double slashes, it's a comment. So this code doesn't work anymore. It's just in there for reference, maybe or for you to add some comment. And let's add, for example, red. So the hover color now is red. So once I hover this icon, it will change to red. So see, this is a nice. way to show the user how that it can be clickable and they can interact. Good. 
Okay, so this is the gallery. One of the most important things inside the app. It's still possible to do way more things, make it look way nicer. We mm -hmm. may have may do some sometimes a video improving galleries, improving the visuals. Uh, Leo is really good with designing. So and this. yeah. So if anyone is watching this video, can leave in the comments uh, requesting some some videos or giving some ideas to us.